What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to handle different time zones or multiple time zones in python so we're going to look at date timestamps or timestamps and we're going to convert them from one time zone to another time zone we're going to get some information about it and this is what we're going to do today so let us get right into it all right so the first thing that we're going to do for today's video is we're going to install an external library called pytz and i think that stands for pi time zone or pi time zones and for that, we open up the command line of our choice. So usually on Windows, the CMD command line on Linux and Mac, usually the terminal. And then we type pip install pytz like that. This is the module that we're going to use. And we're going to use it in combination with the core Python module date time. So we're going to start by importing date time as DT. This is just an alias. And then we're going to import pytz for the time zones. Now, I'm going to start right away with a simple example here to show you what the idea of today's video is. And we're going to create a simple daytime object. Now I'm going to call it DT1. And this is going to be dt.datetime.now. Now, chances are you have already worked with the daytime module. Essentially, it provides these daytime objects and datetime.now gives us a daytime that is right now. So you can see down here, it's the 4th of April. Um, it's 1.47 p.m. And essentially, this is what we're going to see here. But this is, of course, my local time. I'm here in Europe, in Vienna, and this is not the same as a time in New York, for example. Um, so I can print this date time object here. And you're going to see that I get this time. This is the time here in Vienna. It is not the time in New York. The problem is, let's say I get a date time stamp from somewhere else. This is not going to be the same time, right? So I need to take... Uh, I, I need to think about this as well. Now, one thing that we can do here is we can use the standard, uh, the standardized uh, UTC, which stands for Coordinated Universal Time. Um, and that is one thing that we can do, of course. So I can say DT2 equals d, uh, dt.datetime.now. And here now what I do is I pass pytz.utc as a parameter here, and I print that DT2 object now. And now we're going to see that we get a different time. So this is the UTC time, the coordinated uh, universal time. And what you see here is also the offset. So when we use UTC, we always get an offset. So this time here would be this time plus two hours. So that would be uh, the way to write that. Now, this here is the current UTC time at the moment without taking into co consideration where I am right now. This is just the time. So what I can also do, though, is I can say dt3, for example, equals dtdatetime.now. And now I can just say pytz.timezone. And here I can say, for example, I think it is Europe, Vienna. And then I can print dt3 to get the current time here as a UTC offset time. So this is essentially this time here. And this indicates that, yes, this is the time here, but this already includes two hours plus two UTC. So we would have to subtract two hours to get the UTC time. So those are the basics. This is now not really an example yet, but those are the basics. And for today's video, I want to show you a simple example. So how can this be useful? Let's say you work with a database, you do some data science work, you do some analysis of some data, maybe stock data, and you have certain information about a trade, you have certain information about something that happened, and you want to maybe build some data structure that is um, time sensitive. So you want to know what came before what, but then you have different timestamps. And these timestamps, uh, you also have the information that they happened at different locations. And maybe because the people that created or gathered this data are not very um, thoughtful, they just mixed up different time zones and there, there's no standardization in there. So maybe you have a timestamp that says uh, 11 p.m., but this is in, I don't know, Amsterdam, and then you have 11 p.m. somewhere in um, Argentina. Um, and then basically you have mixed time zones. So the idea is that you have a date time string in a database, for example, and this date time string says, okay, something happened at 2021, uh, 1st of January, and it happened at 12, 21, 33. So this means 12 PM, because, uh, if you use the standardized, uh, notion, you don't go with PM AM, you say something like 14, 15 and so on. 
Um, but let's say this was the timestamp and we have the additional information that the time zone, so the time zone um, that this daytime string is from. So we're going to call this current time zone. Let's say we know that this is US Central or US Eastern. Let's say it's New York, US Eastern. We know this is the timestamp from there. And now I want to take all the timestamps in the data in the database that I have because I have some from Asia, I have some from US, I have some from Africa, some from Europe, and I want to have all of those in Europe Vienna time because that's where I'm working, for example. So what I can do is I can create here the time zone object, pytz.timezone, and I'm going to call this US slash Eastern. And um, then I'm going to create also target time zone, which is the time zone I want to convert this to. And this is going to be in my case, Europe, Vienna, you can also go with London and Berlin and whatever. I'm going to use that. Now let me add an E here. And we we'll want to convert this thing here from US Eastern to Europe Vienna. So we assume this time is local US time. So the first thing we can do here is we can say, okay, the date time, let's call this New York is equal to DT dot date time dot strp time. So basically taking the string and turning it into a daytime object, the string is the daytime string and the format is essentially um, the year, then we have the month, then we have the day, and then we have hours, minutes, seconds, like that. This is what we have here the format. So now we have this string and now we have a daytime object and we can go ahead and print this to see what this looks like. Um, it's just a daytime object. So we don't really know yet that it is from a certain time zone and we want to display it in a different time zone. So the first thing we want to do is we want to localize it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, localized New York is going to be um, current time zone dot localize. So we so we take that time zone object here, which is US Eastern, we take this time here, and we now localize it saying that it is from here. So we basically pass date time New York. And I think we should be able to also print this to see the difference here. Um, now, this basically tells us minus five saying that okay, yeah, this is this is the time. But we also know this is minus five from UTC. So UTC has a certain time and subtract five from that you get to this time. So if you want to have the UTC time, you add plus five, and then you have the UTC time. This is important. So now we know that this time is localized, we know where it's from. And what we can do now is we can convert it by saying and this is actually the final step already, we can say date time, Vienna equals and then what we can do is we can say localized New York dot as time zone. And now we pass the different times on the target time zone. And as a result, we get this time here. So daytime Vienna. And you can see that here now we have 18 o'clock plus one meaning that it's one away from the UTC. And we could actually go ahead and compare those so we can say a localized New York. And then also the daytime New York to see the differences here. And you can see first of all, we had just a raw timestamp, this is just time, then we knew that it is from New York or from US Eastern. Then we took it and converted it to Vienna. So this time there means this time here. Now, for my work, maybe I don't really care that this is plus one UTC, this is interesting for conversion, but I don't care about conversion. I just want to take the raw stamps from the database. Let's say I have two columns, you can think of it like that we have a database and it says, okay, I don't know event that uh, underscore timestamp or date timestamp, whatever. And then we have another column, which is event time zone or event location, and we have the information. So for each timestamp, we iterate through the database, what we do is we take the string from this column here, we take the current time zone from this column here. And all we want to have is we want to get rid of those and we want to get only the timestamp in local time Europe Vienna. So 
we don't want to have the UTC thing. We want to have something like this again. And how we can do that is quite simple. We can go ahead and say print the daytime Vienna dot replace. And we replace the TZ info, so the time zone info by none. And then we get the raw timestamp from this year to this year. This is how we convert the time, uh, the time zone in a simple way. So that's it actually for the example. Now I want to show you just a couple of interesting functions here uh, on the side. So what we can do as well here is we can also just not print the, uh, the whole thing. We can also print just a time TZ, which will only give us a time. This can also be quite useful. If we don't really care about the date, we just want to know at what time it happened because let's say we're looking for correlations between time and something else and we don't really care about the day. Um, and then the other thing is I want to show you a couple of general functions here. For example, how do you know the time zones? You can actually list them by saying pi tz dot all underscore time zones. And then you get a list here of all the time zones and you can look for your city or your country or your region. Um, and if those are too much for you, you can also go ahead and say common time zones. So those are then not all the time zones, but just those that are commonly used. There you go, you can see it's way less. Um, and then what you can also do, this is quite interesting, is you can, if you know that you have a certain country, or you know what your country code is, you can say country time zones. For example, I can go with AT for Austria. And you can see here, I only have Europe Vienna, because in Austria, we only have this one time zone. However, if I'm from the US, I can type US and I can see here, America, New York, America, Detroit, and all, uh, all sorts of time zones. So Pacific, Honolulu. Um, yeah, so you can see that here. Actually, we don't see US Eastern here, which is surprising. But yeah, you can use the other ones as well. Um, and then maybe another thing that can be quite interesting to get some more detailed information about a particular time zone. So if we have the localized time New York, we can get some more information about the time zone name, for example, we can get some more information about the um, UTC offset here. So you can see here the offset is uh, this. And uh, this is the time zone name. Now one thing that I have here in my prepared notes is the function DST. What does that actually Okay, I'm not sure what DST is, to be honest. But yeah, this is what you can do. You can get the localized um, date, you can get some information about it, you can list possible time zones, common time zones, and also time zones for your country. And then this is the most important part, because this is actually a practical example, you have a database with a bunch of timestamps that are chaotically um, gathered, and everyone wrote everything in their local time. You just take those strings, you convert them to daytime objects, and you can convert time zones provided, of course, you have them because you cannot magically know the time zone. But if you know the time zone, you can convert it to another time zone. And of course, if you want it in your local time zone, you do it like that. Otherwise, you just do it as UTC. So you don't have to actually specify a specific time zone, you just take the standardized UTC and that works as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.